Wally Gibbons located the wreck and Dr. Walter Stark dove for a closer look. It's in remarkably good shape for all its years beneath the sea. Salvagers have stripped off its machine guns and the twin boom tail has broken off. Everything else remains much as it was, except that it's now the home of thousands of beautiful little fish. The rest of the planes on the mission flew on to Bougainville. It was a tricky operation and depended on split-second timing, sort of like threading a needle 400 miles away. Admiral Yamamoto was a brilliant man. Educated at Yale University in America, he had been regarded as a friend of the United States until the war broke out, when he immediately pledged and fulfilled his total and absolute devotion to his Emperor Hirohito. His sheer brilliance was credited for much of the success the Japanese Navy had enjoyed in the early part of the war. Among his many outstanding characteristics was his absolute obsession for punctuality. He demanded that his every activity be carried out on a precise schedule, right to the second, or else. Allied intelligence was aware of Yamamoto's phobia, and it was built into the intricate needle-threading navigational calculations that were engineered on Guadalcanal. Of course, there were other navigational factors involved, such things as wind force and direction that would influence the ground speed of the P-38s, and that would be experienced by Yamamoto's two bombers and his escort of six Zeros. And speaking of Zeros, it was also known that there were 100 of them based at Yamamoto's destination, Camille Airfield. It was a statistic that had caused some concern to the P-38 pilots as they roared on toward the meeting place. The P-38s, led by Colonel Thomas Lampier, spotted Bougainville, and quick calculations indicated they were right on schedule. But where was Yamamoto? And then suddenly, the Admiral's flight was spotted, exactly where it was supposed to be. Yamamoto was keeping his date with destiny, as he lived his life on schedule. The attack was quick and sure. Both bombers, carrying the Admiral's entire staff, went down. Yamamoto's fell under the hail of fire from Colonel Lanfear's guns. Two of the P-38s were lost, and the rest made their way back to Fighter 2. Mission accomplished. Ironically, a short time later, Colonel Lanfear's brother was shot down and crashed in almost the exact spot as did Yamamoto's plane. Strange fortunes of war. <laughs>